We'd say that the two most overvalued part of global markets are firstly the US market overall. Uh, it's the biggest part of the world. Some global equity managers have 50, 60, 70 or more percent of their portfolio in the US. And to us, that just doesn't make sense. It's a much broader world out there. The US is up 200 percent in the nine years since 30 June 2009. If you look at Europe, emerging markets, Japan, they're up more like 50. So you've got to have better opportunities in those other markets given how much they've lagged. And that's, that's where we've got the bulk of our portfolio. So 60% of our portfolio is invested outside the US, predominantly in Europe, but also in Asia, and obviously emerging markets in each of those. Then the second part of the most overvalued would clearly be the tech space. Now, as a value guy, we haven't always been able to buy tech stocks, but a couple of years ago, we were able to buy some of the brand names, Apple, Google, Microsoft, etc. But as those stocks have done really well, they've now got to valuations where we've found them getting onto our source of funds list, and therefore we've decreased the exposure to tech pretty significantly in the portfolio. So where does that leave us? It leaves us overweight the markets outside the US, particularly Europe. It leaves us overweight in financials, where while we've had a bit of economic recovery, we've still got the world stepping back from QE, negative interest rates and the like. We're overweight healthcare. Nice long-term thematic of increasing healthcare spending as well as rising middle class in places like China and the other emerging markets, which gives you a nice backdrop of rising revenue over time. And the last one would be the energy sector. Now, for the last few years, we've been overweight energy and arguing that the oil price is going to go higher. We're not making the argument so much that the oil price is going to go a long way up from the $65, $70 a barrel, but the, the stocks that we're buying aren't discounting that $70 a barrel price either. We're getting, out of some of the integrated players that we own, 10% free cash flow year yield next year, 6% of that coming back to us as a dividend, which we think gives you a pretty good underpinning for what the returns should be out of those shares going forward. Templeton Global Growth, TGG, has been delivering a diversified value portfolio for Australian investors for the last 30 plus years. Um, the analysts, wherever they're based around the world, typically follow a global sector. So we've got someone following the global autos, someone else doing global pharma, global software, whatever it might be. And they follow a unconstrained approach and they're trying to find the best idea for our investors, wherever those investors are in the world, which wherever in the sector. So you might have um, an analyst following the global software industry who's followed the ups and downs of that industry over time, thinking about how the industry is going to develop. And while the tech sector overalls had a pretty massive run over the last few years, that hasn't been without individual companies running into particular problems. So Oracle um, is a name that we've held in the portfolio over time, but of recent times, even with tech having had a shoot the lights out sort of couple of years, Oracle's still trading on 14 times earnings and they've had some, I'd say, problems communicating with their audience and led to the shares being under pressure and that's been an opportunity for TGG to increase our exposure to Oracle. The risks in markets at the moment, I, I'd say, predominantly centre around politics and everything that flows out of that. Um, so you've got a potentially trade war coming towards us, which really at the moment seems to be US versus the world, US isolationism. Um, so that's got to have some implications and should raise some concerns for people that do have those global equity portfolios that are so US centric. Secondly would be some of the po political issues, the rise of populum, populism in some markets and the like. So those have to be some of the concerns as well as just the extent to which the global economic recovery is getting a little bit long in the tooth. Again, we'd make that comment more about the US where the economic recovery, uh, bar some countries like Australia, has been going on the longest uh, and is now bumping up against some capacity constraints which could put pressure from the cost side and make it harder for companies to go grow profits going forward. Templeton Global Growth Fund, TGG, has been listed on the ASX since 1987. So it's a 30-year-old value-oriented bottom-up stock picking portfolio that we've been managing for Aussie investors since that time frame. Uh, the portfolio has delivered something around 9% per annum over that 30 years. And even after fees and expenses, that's delivered a return which is ahead of the index. The portfolio's got um, a diversified spread exposure to all the major regions and a broad range of sectors 
um, around the world. So it's constructed for Australian investors, run in a quite tax effective manner as well. It's a low turnover, so most of the gains tend to be recognised on a long term basis, which has some, some advantage for um, high taxpayers in particular. Uh, the management fee within the portfolio is one of the most competitive within the global leaks, 1% and the other fees and expenses that get charged to the fund also leave it as one of the most cost competitive licks in the space.